Good morning and welcome back to our Ask the Agronomist video series. I am Phil Long, Precision Agronomy Advisor with Latham High Tech Seeds. And to have a little bit of fun here towards the end of the 2021 growing season, I thought we'd do a little bit of a roundup. So the last couple here we're going to do are going to be my thoughts on where the yield came from in 2021. And we're going to start out with soybeans uh, and then we'll finish up with corn. So. Uh, just just to jump right in, I'm going to start off and give you my top three, and then I'm going to kind of walk through them as, as we go. So weather, balanced fertility, and uh, planting date uh, and conditions, I'll call it. So those are my top three, uh, and I know in the past, I've, I've heard this many times, so I just want to kind of start off with this, that uh, soybeans don't typically see uh, as much of a yield gain over time as corn does, and that's exactly right. I won't dispute that. Corn sees uh, about the last 50 years, we've seen around a two bushel an acre increase year over year versus soybeans, which is under a half a bushel increase. Uh, but there's a lot of reasons for that. I've mentioned those before. Uh, but just remember, when you see that trend line, there's, there's always the above and below average on a trend line. And 2021 is, is gonna be that one that's hitting above average. So we are still increasing year over year. It just looks different every year. And when it comes to soybeans, like I just mentioned, weather is number one, always will be, it's gonna bounce back and forth. As long as we're going up, that's the important thing. So let's jump right in. The first one I said was, was rain or weather, uh, really is paramount when it comes to soybean yields and getting them at the right time. So what's the right time for soybeans in terms of getting that moisture? It's really during that seed development period. So uh, we talk about the growth of soybean plants a lot. It's important to understand how they yield, but really that R4, R5 time period, I'm gonna call it seed development. So R4 is a full pod, and then R5 is, is beginning seed, and then R6 is full seed. So that R4 to R6 time period is really the most crucial. If you ever look at a, a yield loss on soybeans when it comes to defoliation or a severe stress uh, during the season, those that time period, that R4 to R6 time period is where you're gonna see the most loss, whether it's, it's hail damage or severe stress, that's when it's gonna zap the most out of the, out of the soybean. So, and this, a lot of this has to do with where we're at in the country, we grow indeterminate soybeans, it gives us an opportunity with their growth habit to make up for a lot of lost lost yield, I'll call it lost time. So once we hit reproduction, R1, the, the indeterminate soybeans still have that ability to grow tall, put on more nodes, and in flower. Uh, they still have the ability to flower all the way up until R5. So just remember that. Uh, we always think about flowering. It is a crucial time. It's when we need to get that canopy closed, uh, but they still have that ability to compensate for flowers and pods up to R5. And then that, that critical period for moisture, which in a lot of cases in Latham country, we got a late season moisture, maybe even mid to late August was where a lot of the moisture came in. They were still green, so remember that. Uh, they were still green. R7 is when they start to, that's beginning maturity, they start to get brown. Uh, so as long as they're still in that R6 time period, they still have really R5, uh, which can last, once you get to R R4, they start increasing in the amount of days that they last. It's 15 to 20 days. R6 can last at least 20 plus days long. So if they have the ability to take up a little moisture during that period, they're gonna either increase seed size or potentially if they're still in the R5 to R6, they, they could still put on a few more uh, pods, and, or excuse me, they'll put on some pods, but probably more likely add a few more seeds in the pods. So one indicator I talk about a lot is seeing that terminal raceme at the top. If you see that, they're done uh, growing height-wise, node-wise. It's a good indicator that they're they're focused just on seed uh, seed fill and seed development. So critical time uh, that R4 to R6. A lot of people got some rains right around that time to keep them feeling a little less stressed. So if you have irrigation, that's the time period when you obviously should be putting moisture on or rain on, and that's you know putting that water on all the way from R4. Uh, to the end of seed fill, really to maturity essentially, when they're done and they stop growing is the crucial time for soybeans. So the next one is, is balanced fertility. And I don't wanna say, uh, a lot of times we get caught up in saying unlimited fertility or uh, you know something to that effect, but it's more about balance. So when I look at uh, soil tests, especially for soybeans, first thing I look at is pH, because pH really determines the availability of every other nutrient 
to that plant during the season. So if your pH isn't right, number one, soybeans won't nodul nodulate well below uh, 5, 7, 5, 8 pH, they start to struggle. But availability, a lot of the nutrients also uh, is, is tough for the plant. So just to give us an understanding on uptake, I thought I'd throw in these numbers we talk about a lot, but the big three, NP and K, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, Soybeans take up about five pounds of nitrogen, about one pound of phosphorus, and about two and a half pounds of potassium. That's why we always stress potassium. So if you think about a 60 bushel roughly soybean crop, <coughs> excuse me, it's gonna be about 300 pounds of nitrogen, uh, about 60 pounds of phosphorus, and about 150 pounds of potassium. Seems like a lot, and hopefully you're not fertilizing that much for soybeans, obviously, especially the nitrogen part, but that's actually what they take up during the growing season. So as far as what they leave behind, they're leaving some of that behind, taking a little bit of it in the seed, but that's not the removal that you had fertilized for. That's what the crop takes up, what it requires during the growing season. And if you look at when it takes that up, if you look at that R2, we get R1, then R2, and then about R3, that's when that huge increase in the curve goes up in terms of the demand and need for those nutrients. So if we get water, the soybeans have roots in the soil good and they still have moisture, they can take up those nutrients. When that, that's, that demand, that period of high demand comes, they're able to take it up. And as long as those aren't limiting, that there's no factor that's really limiting them, they're gonna take up uh, everything that they need in a pretty quick period of time. A couple of the other ones, and I mention them occasionally, uh, that are really important. We talk a lot about iron because we have IDC, but iron and manganese uh, are critical. Molybdenum is critical for, for soybean nodulation and uh, nitrogen utilization, uh, starting those nodules and utilizing it in the plant. You know, potassium, that's why we stress it so much, really helps with that nitrogen uptake and utilization in the plant as well. It also helps with uh, handling stress during the growing season. Uh, phosphorus and potassium really help with that growth overall, the big three do. Uh, and then the other one I'd throw in there is sulfur. And sulfur and nitrogen go hand in hand in terms of uh, helping build proteins and amino acids. But uh, all, overall growth of the plant, those two are the ones you see. And corn and soybeans show up as yellowing, stunting, and so forth. So just highly critical, but those two, nitrogen and sulfur, also move with uh, the moisture. So if there's lots of moisture, you know, they, they can move down in the soil profile. So having balanced fertility is number two having it there during the period they need it and, and be to some extent not limiting uh, the soybean when it when it really needs it is is my second one the last one is planting date and and uh, by that I mean some of the conditions we planted into we had in a lot of areas of Latham country we had a late frost uh, around Memorial Day which was really tough in a lot of places and, and likely did knock yields at least you know probably in some cases five to ten plus bushel uh, so those areas may not be seeing the yield bump that uh, some area, some other areas did, but maybe next year they will. So uh, that that frost did have an effect. Uh, but what I what I mean more or less by planting date is getting it in on time. So this doesn't mean that you planted it ultra early or early April or something. It means you hit that window that's critical to get soybeans in the ground for your area and get the maximum number of nodes produced. So in a lot of cases, that's early May, maybe the first week or two of May, you got it in the ground, it was decent conditions, maybe you had a seed treatment on it, helped to get out of the ground quick. May was kind of a rough month, but it was there and it was still developing. Even if soybeans are growing slow, they're still, uh, still really stacking up those nodes and, and determining how many nodes they're gonna produce overall. And a lot of that has to do with uh, planting date. So getting them in on time is, is crucial for soybeans, not treating them like the second crop, which a lot of times they get done and they may wait, especially in a tough wet year, till well after corn is in the ground. So I, in my, my opinion, I think in a lot of cases that's what really uh, was that additional driver to yield was having that nodes, the maximum number of nodes that we could get for the maturities that you plant uh, on, on, the, on the plant so that you can get the maximum number of seeds. So just to kind of summarize things, uh, when it comes to soybeans, weather, rain is, is paramount. Uh, so unless you can irrigate, obviously, uh, I'd encourage you if you're, if you're maybe distraught a little bit about uh, yields this year, you know, take a look at some of the high yield contests. You'll notice, unless they have irrigation, that uh, they fluctuate depending on the year and the amount of rain that they have. Soybeans are highly dependent 
on moisture. You know, when it comes to corn, we, we start the season and, and the yield, you know, may tick down a little at a time depending on these little stressors. Soybeans are not that way. Soybeans uh, really can be stressed the first part of the season as long as they get planted in a somewhat timely fashion and can get some nodes on there. Uh, they'll get a good amount of nodes and a good amount of pods, but they can still make up for it in terms of pods later in the season. So like I said, that first part of the season isn't quite as critical for soybeans, but getting them canopied by R1 uh, kind of signals to their brain that, okay, we're doing good, we're not losing excess moisture, uh, we have the ability, we're not as stressed, we can put on more, continue to put on more pods and continue to flower uh, for maximum yield. So. The other thing I'd say that I noticed a lot from 2021 was there was a, a, a pretty big disparity on, on the, having the correct hybrid placed in each field. And that's why we stress our field by field placement so much. And that's why you should always really care when it comes to the spring, make sure that that hybrid gets planted in the right field. Because in, in this year, there were some fields and so forth that showed a 10 plus bushel difference. Uh, it wasn't because one hybrid or variety, I should say, soybean variety was was poor it's just because that particular there was one particular hybrid that, or variety that fit that field much better so making sure that you select your soybean varieties to fit each field and not just planting them wherever uh, makes a much bigger difference than you think and I think in 2021 we, we saw that especially so that's my wrap up on soybeans I uh, hope you enjoyed it uh, if you have any questions feel free to reach out we always uh, appreciate any comments and questions uh, we look forward to seeing you next time mm -hmm.